What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 191 of the Arc Junkies podcast. I just got back from Fabtech 2021 in Chicago, and man, this was an epic event. I know a lot of people were hesitant about showing up because the bigger companies, you know, they said at the last minute they weren't going to go, they weren't going to make an appearance, but uh, honestly, I think it made for a better show. I was actually able to walk around and chat with all the vendors, you know, talk to the small businesses, see some of the new products and services that are available from the, uh, the vendors at the event. You, know, you just get so tied up with, you know, going from, you know, the, the big booths. You, you never get a chance to see the small companies, the small business owners, the people that are out there building the products themselves, putting stuff out there and, uh, you know, kind of giving back to the community. It was, it was just a great time. You know, I got to meet a lot of the fans of the show, got to hang out with some really cool people over at uh, Arcs and Ales, the other events that I went out to. Got to hang out with some old friends, meet some new ones, and there was just so many awesome events. It was like every night there was something going on. Um, I highly recommend if you've never been to Fabtech or if you missed this Fabtech, you know, because of, you know, whatever the case may be, make sure to start planning now for Fabtech 2022 in Atlanta, Georgia. I know I'm going to be there, so, uh, you know, start planning now. I I know I am. Uh, Today's guest on the show is none other than Nate Bowman. Nate was the first person I got to sit down and actually hit the record button with face-to-face while hanging out at Fabtech on day one. We talk a little bit about the Fabtech experience some of the cool new products that were unveiled exclusively at Fabtech, like uh, Rush Cane, Cane Kids' new uh, TIG machine. We talk about Hypertherm's new sync system. And we also talk about welding on Instagram and much more. We're going to get into all that, but first, a quick word from the supporters of the show. Today's episode of the Arc Junkies podcast is brought to you by Step Wedge. You guys have got to check these out. Whether you're a pipe hand, a structural fabricator, ornamental worker, or you work in a job shop, Every welder and fabricator should have a set of reliable, well-built wedges for your toolbox. I used to use scrap material for years to set my gaps and shim parts before welding, but it was always guesswork. The step wedge has allowed me to get the perfect gap every time. Whether I'm setting up an open route demo for the kids at the school or setting a gap in my shop at home, the step wedge has become my favorite tool in my arsenal. Step wedges are made from hardened stainless steel. They won't contaminate your exotic alloys. And the spatter-proof wedges are made from plasma, nitrate, carbon steel, making these wedges nearly indestructible. The step wedge allows you to set any gap from 332 to a quarter of an inch, and the spatter-proof wedges allow you to set your own custom gap from flush up to a quarter of an inch. Get your step and spatter-proof wedges today at gapintact.com and get 10% off when you use code word PARKJUNKIES in the discount box at checkout. That's right. Head on over to gapintact.com right now to take advantage of this great deal. That's G A P. A N D T A C K dot com. Wedges made for professionals. We're also brought to you by Fronius USA. And right now, they're running their Dip into Summer promo where you can get an instant $600 rebate when you buy a Magic Wave 230i in either air cooled or water cooled, along with a Bluetooth accessory. You could choose from the Visor Connect welding helmet or the wireless foot pedal. The Fronius Magic Wave 230i AC DC air cooled TIG machine is another huge step forward in the welding industry. Fronius brings their state-of-the-art technology to the brand new class of AC-DC air-cooled TIG welders. Every time Fronius comes out with a new machine, a new standard is set in the world of welding takes a huge technological leap forward. This machine is no exception to that, and we know you're going to be impressed. The dip into summer sales promo is only available until September 30th, so you still have a little bit of time to take advantage of this awesome deal. We're also brought to you by Rockmount Research and Alloys. I just had a call the other day with my good friend Ryan Eubank, who's doing some work in a chemical plant. He called me up and asked if I knew of any welding rods that he could use on some material that couldn't be identified. Whew, it was right up my wheelhouse. They had already tried 7018, 8018-B2, 308, 309, nickel, nickel 99, and a bunch of other welding rods, but the welds continued to crack, and they were even doing pre and post heating. I told him to check out the Brutus rod from Rockmount, which is designed specifically for this application. Brutus is designed to weld unidentifiable metals with 135,000 pounds of tensile strength and 35% elongation, and you can put it in with a much lower amperage. For example, an eighth inch diameter Brutus only needs about 95 amps, and they run super smooth. And the best part is, now you can order Rockmount's rods and wires to MSC Direct. And what's more, you can get free shipping on all their products and get it delivered right to your front door. So what's your welding problem? Check out rockmountwelding.com today to find your solution. We're also brought to you by Everlast Welders. There's a storm coming. Everlast just released their new multi-process welding machine, the Storm 215IC. The new Everlast Storm is an all-in-one MIG, stick, and plasma machine. The all-new Storm 215IC is capable of 200 amps for MIG welding, 160 amps for stick welding, and 40 amps for plasma cutting. 
And the best part is, you can pre-order your Storm right now at EverlastWalters.com for the low introductory price of $13.99. And your machine's going to ship to you before the holidays. Now is the perfect time to pull the trigger on a new multi-process machine you've been waiting for. And don't forget to use code word ARCJUNKIES in the comment section at checkout when you buy any machine that comes with a stock foot pedal and get that free Nova foot pedal and tick torch upgrade absolutely free. All right, you know what time it is. Fire up your machine, drop your hood, and turn me up five. You're listening to the Arc Junkies Podcast. Helping you make every weld better than your last with each episode. And now your host, Jason Becker. Right, Nate, how does it feel to be back at Fabtech in Chicago? Man, it is crazy to be back here. We were just talking about like how it feels like uh, we were just here. Yeah, but it was just here two, two years, years ago. ago. Yeah, um, it's a little different. Um, I think they said that there's like twenty eight thousand people registered for the show. It's um, still quite a bit. Still quite a bit. I think the record was forty or forty something thousand um, the last time we were here. Okay, so about half. Yeah, which I think it's kind of better because you're not fighting to see everything now. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. the show's a little bit more open. Everybody's a little bit more accessible. Yep. There's still a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and a lot of uh, a lot of the people showed up. Um, you know, maybe you don't necessarily have the companies, but a lot of the people showed up. Um, so that's really cool and been, uh, you know, been really nice. I mean, we've only been here for. I don't know, half an hour, how many people we've run into. Yeah, probably 30. Yeah. I think the coolest one so far was we just ran into Gary Konarska with the American Welding Society. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been wanting to meet him for a long time. Uh, we've chatted back and forth on via social media, LinkedIn, Instagram. Uh, but, you know, just to meet him in person, I thought that was pretty slick. Oh, yeah. He just, like, wanders up and is like, hey, what's up, everybody? And, yeah. like, we got some pictures with him. And, um, yeah, that'll be that'll be really cool. Just, you know, he's just a cool, easy, easy, easily accessible, yeah. like, CEO of – you know, one of the biggest, I mean, arguably the biggest name in the, the industry. Yeah. You know? As far as, yeah, AWS, I mean, it's it, it's kind of a big name. You know, they're recognized nationally mm-hmm. and internationally. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's just cool. Like, Gary's, he's like our age. Yeah. You know, and he's president of AWS. And I think his background is in robotics from Lincoln Electric, right? Yeah. That's how he's I He's like super cool. It's super big into automation. Yes. Yeah. So he worked um, on uh, a lot of their overseas automation stuff. Um and like I guess that's my my understanding. So he's he he's kind of what's really cool is he works for AWS, but he has a lot of experience around the world. Mm. And you know, understanding the welding industry, you really have to look at the welding industry like as a whole, like as a global market. Um, you know, we build things that get chipped all over the world, and yeah. you got to be paying attention to what what your competition is overseas. What is it like ninety percent of our gross domestic product? You know, that's shipped out of the United States is there's some sort of welded component on it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, think about you can't you can't walk around anywhere and find something that's not welded. Yeah, and, and the, the the cool the thing that blows my mind is I toured Lincoln and they talk about the amount of wire that they produce on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. They make enough wire to wrap around the entire world two and a half times per day. Yeah, and it's like where does all that welding wire go? I mean, it's not sitting on a shelf in a warehouse waiting to be bought. I mean, this is stuff that's getting used. I mean, they're they're cranking it out so much wire. You know, talk about deposition rates. I mean, yeah. people are just burning rod and wire all the time, all, all day. Time. All and you time. don't see, you know, how, how much stuff is actually welded. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, the, um, yeah, there's just always stuff being welded. Um, that's kind of what we're going to talk about a little bit. Like how, how many different, like welding is, I'm really kind of, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm guilty of being like, I guess, annoyed with like, the like welding art stuff and the like TV welders and things like that. Cause I'm like, you know, I used to be like, well, it's not really real, like a real welder or mm-hmm. being like, it's not really necessarily like really welding, but like they're still really welding. Yes. It's just a different form of welding. Yeah. Like if you can get paid to weld, if you can get paid to have people take pictures of you welding, like doesn't mean that you're not a welder. Uh, doesn't make you pretend, you know, 
the weld is still there. You're still putting it in. Yeah, I mean, and I think welding just, it's kind of like art, you know, because it's subjective. You know, you could be a hobby welder at the house, you know, tinkering around. Um, I seen a funny meme the other day. It was like, you know, the difference between a welder and a farmer? Okay. <laughs> welders, or welders don't think they can farm. That's pretty true. <laughs> That's so true. But, I mean, you've, you've got so many different facets of welding, so many different types of people that weld, you know, whether it's, like, as a hobbyist or an amateur level, you've got people in education that weld. Um, you know, there's professional welders, you know, to all kinds of different degrees. I mean, people that do aerospace, they probably don't think, oh, flux core, you know, that's not welding. You know, you're just sticking stuff together. What I do is actually welding because, you know, I'm focused on the metallurgy and carbide precipitation and, you know, all. But, I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's all welding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just people, welder, welders are definitely like a very like proud bunch of people. That's, that's to say it lightly, yeah. But, but that's okay. Like, I mean, it's, I think it's great to take a lot of pride in your work. And, um, you know, meeting people from, you know, all different like welding walks of life here at the show and seeing people, um, you know, from guys that weld in their garage just as, as hobbyist welders, you know, to people that are literally welding on, on TV shows um, and, and everywhere in between. Mm -hmm. Aerospace welders, guys that weld, you know, nuclear stuff. Like, they're all here, and we're all here for the same reason, same, same common thing. Like, we're all here because we melt, you know, metal with yeah. electricity. I think the, the biggest difference is, you know, like, the way I see it is, like, how passionate about welding are you? Yeah. And I, I think that's kind of where I kind of place people in different buckets because there's a lot of people that weld that, you know, they don't like welding. They just do it. Yeah, you, yeah. You consider them a welder? I mean, to I, an extent, yeah. But, I mean, like, yeah. I would rather take somebody that's, like, super hyped up about, you know, the whole process and everything, and maybe they're not that great at it. I would, I would kind of place them on a higher pedestal in, re, in relation to welding anyway. Yeah, yeah. I think that taking a lot of pride in your work is, is like, the key to the whole, like, being successful as a welder. Like, Rush and I are dropping our welding is forever collab shirts i like those shirts those are badass this kind of happened on accident we were you know setting up that school in uh in eastern oregon um mm -hmm. and we were welding the booths out and this was kind of like we were setting the school up we didn't really have anything for the, we didn't have booths for the kids to weld in yet so the first project was welding well, the booths make out. some booths so i brought a bunch of like uh of those big fireball um the big squares mm -hmm. and stuff so i could fit all this tubing up you know it's all two by two 120 wall um, you know, pretty simple fit up stuff. You know, I got Bessies. You can clamp everything together and get everything kind of dialed in. But these kids were just like getting in a hurry, fitting things up. Yeah. And just like getting ahead of themselves, not tacking things in the right place, not double checking all their measurements. And they're like welding all this out. And I'm like getting a little frustrated. And I'm like, listen, welding is forever. It takes like maybe five extra minutes to, to double, triple check what you're doing. Once you put that weld in, like, yeah, you can grind it back out, but it's never going to be as nice as if you did it right the, the first, first time. time. And if you take the time to do that, like, you know, it, it can, it'll literally be there indefinitely. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what it's all about. Like, I think about that every single time I make a weld. Like you say, make every weld better than your last. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, yeah. That's, just, that's the problem I run into the the with students all the time. Like, we, we focus on, like, welding, right? That's the most technical aspect. That's why they show up to the program. That's why they're paying the tuition. They want to learn how to weld. And, you know, you start teaching them fabrication, and they just want to stick stuff together. They want to get there as fast as they can so that they can do the weld. Yeah, I like welding the most, too. I'm not really a good fabricator right. at all. But, like you said, welding is forever, you know, so let's take some time to cut it, fit it up, measure it, Check it again, measure it again, you know, measure this stuff three, four times because once you put that weld in, you know, it's done. And it's, it's and if you have to cut it out, it's never going to look as good as, I mean, you can. I mean, once you, I, like, I got really good at repairing stuff. Yeah. Because I used to weld stuff up without double, triple checking it. And it's, it's not square or, you know, you weld up one side and you, you weld the wrong side first. And now you've got all this heat distortion and it's pulling and it, it screws everything up. Now you got to cut it all pack, back apart and it's. I've said it before on the podcast. It, it takes 300% longer to do it wrong. You know, oh, to yeah. have to go back and do rework, rework's 300% longer than it takes to do it initially right the first time. Yeah, and I think a lot of people just, they want to get to that, uh, they want to get to that, like, that goal. We're getting photos. Bob Moffat. Bob uh, Moffat is hanging, uh, creeping around in the, in the, the corner. The new cameraman. Yeah. That guy's so funny. Like, last night, we were like, uh, we, we had the, the meet and greet last night, and 
he shows up or whatever. Or I saw him like from across the room, and I walk over. I'm like, "What are you signing autographs?" And he was literally signing <laughs> autographs. It was so funny. I walked up and I, I just he was people. he was in a conversation with the manager over at Hard Rock, and I just put my hand on his shoulder and just kind of hung out there for a minute. And then he turned around. And he's like, "Oh shit!" You know, like. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty neat. Like Scott Robbie. Yeah, every, yeah Scott Robbie. Every, that's so the, like that's the running joke. Last night at Hard Rock, we went to uh, it was hosted by Weld Porn, Blue Demon, Aluma Real, Outlaw Leather, uh, Outlaw Welding Worldwide, and everybody kept calling me Scott Robbie. Just I guess it's just because of the beard. So yeah, you, when they're taking photos, I was like, don't tag me in the photo. Tag Scott Robbie. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're waiting for uh, Scott to show up. Yeah, he's been, I was in, with he's you. been in I was, Chicago since Saturday. I was with you, and the guy's like, hey, Scott, it's great to see you. And you're like, and you just, like, didn't say anything. And he goes, oh, oh, Jason, sorry, man, sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's a trip, man, and especially when we get together. People are, like, you know, kind of looking and doing double takes and everything. It's, I guess he's, like, my doppelganger, or I'm his doppelganger. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like brother from another mother. It's yep. the beard, though. Him and Randy, when uh, Randy from Illuma Reel, oh, when yeah. us three get together, you know, oh, it's like God, the yeah. beards are back, man. And then Travis with Blue Demon. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, he's, he hosts all the um, Outlaw Leather Worldwide YouTube videos. Oh, right on. So we all four have the red beards. That's funny. So that's pretty pretty neat. The four red beards yeah. together at Fabtech. Yeah, it's like a bunch of Irish Vikings hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are all, like, twice my size. It's, <laughs> like, uh, it's always, always a, a fun thing. <laughs> That's why I hang out with Rush because we're both the same size. About the same size. You're like the little pocket size version, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's nice being a small welder. Uh, I will say. Oh yeah, you could fit in a lot tighter spaces and stuff. But yeah. then again, it's gotta suck being a small welder sometimes too. Like yeah. when you're working for companies, because welding is heavy. Yeah, and <laughs> it's like huge. Like go get Nate and Rush. We gotta get somebody on the inside of this pipe. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I was working, um, I was working for Airgas. One of my first like projects was uh, converting a shipyard over from CO two to seventy five twenty five. I mean, in you know, like, just imagine a bunch of like giant shipyard dudes, and they're like welding barges together, and I'm like the guy that has to like help them learn how to weld better. And like, yeah, it was not did not go very well. No, lucky I didn't get welded up in in a panel in a barge somewhere. <laughs> Like, those guys, man, like, yeah, carrying an LN25 with a full spool through a bunch of, uh, like, port holes and port all holes that. and stuff, like, with a bunch of lead behind it, welding in there. That's going to suck. Like, it, it sucks bad enough dragging it around on decking and stuff, you yeah. know? Like, yeah. But, like, down in there, like, I mean, that thing is, that's it's pretty heavy just as it is without a spool of wire in it, but then you throw a full spool in there, man. Yeah. yeah and welding guys. lead's not heavy, especially when you get the right gauge for the job, you know, because now your machine's, like, 600 yards over there, you know, so oh, you're yeah. using some big heavy-ass cable. Oh, yeah. Trying to, you know, manipulate it and pull it through different doors and openings, get it where you need to. That's that's people, those guys are definitely would argue, would be like, yeah, this person welding on TV is not a real welder. Yeah, that's welder. not a welder. It's not a real welding. Yeah. Making flowers. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like that person that's making flowers in their garage makes just as money, much money as you do yeah. welding, you know, on your battleship. Exactly. Which is, not it's not like saying that it's one is better than the other it's just no like, it's like not it's different it's not everybody's cup of tea like i i love doing structural steel iron work and there's people out there they're like man you're you're you either like the dumb. high rise stuff yeah oh really they're, yeah, they're like yeah you're you're either thing. dumb or you're insane it's like you you like that heavy work and it's like yeah it's cool like the view is freaking amazing imagine from I, up there yeah i like i like being uh indoors up yeah. that high but not i don't know how i would feel about being outdoors the highest I've ever, I've ever been on a job is, like, maybe 80 feet or so. Mm-hmm. Um, I was working on a job. I think we talked about this before. I was working on a job where they cut the center of the building out, and I had to weld all the handrail in, mm-hmm. like, tie it all into the beam, like, on the, you know, on the outside. So, I, like, they had it all scaffolded off, you know, scaffolded it off. So it wasn't really that bad, but just, you know, walking around on planks yeah. 80 feet in the air is, you know. We did uh – Mickey's Earful Tower over at Hollywood Studios, and like right at the base, all the the tread plate was falling apart. So we had to go that go out there and cut all the tread plate out, put new uh, struts up underneath. It's just angle iron, like three by three by quarter inch angle iron. So we had to cut all that stuff and then scab it back together. But it was 165 feet at that platform, oh. which was like really cool. And they took us up in the uh, the man basket. Like that morning, we roll up and you know, like. The, but the cool thing is, okay, it's we're gonna make big man basket. We're gonna make this story a little bit longer. Like I'd never been in a man basket before on a crane. Like oh, I've done. It's a crane man yeah. basket, not a not yeah, a man exactly. lift. Exactly. Okay. So like, in, well, we had a man lift there, and then we had the crane also. So the crane, we were gonna use that just because it's a lot faster to get us up there. Pulled the measurements, 
put in all the fall protection and stuff like that, uh, you know, just get everything set up, and we we're going to use back and forth between the crane and the man basket. So they go to do the, first, the load test first thing in the morning. So they pick the man basket up off the back of the trailer, and it's got a 1,000-pound plate on the bottom of it with a, uh, like a, a temporary pin. So they'll, they'll, once they do the load test with that 1,000-pound plate to make sure it's safe for human entry, they'll pull the pin, and then the plate just stays on the ground, and then the basket goes up in the air with the people in it. So we're looking at it. And we're like, damn, you know, my buddy and I, Justin, we're like, there's a, there's a lot of slack in that cable for the amount of weight that's hanging off of, of the basket. Well, apparently they over-greased the cable and the, the wind flag that goes, you know, on top, it, it got tied up inside of the, uh, the cable at the top. So they had to bring everything down. They had to call up the maintenance guy. He had to come out. They had to reshiv the, uh, the block and everything and cut the bad section of the cable out. I've got pictures I'll show you after oh this. Oh, my God. It's insane. And then they're like, Okay, guys, we're ready to go. And I was like, man, I don't know. You guys just worked on that thing. Yeah, you guys, like, literally just cut a section of that cable out. And, like, I seen them over there soldering the ends together and, you know, putting the blocks back in there so it doesn't slip. And I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know if I want to get in this thing. And they were like, oh, no, come on, it's safe. And I was, they were like, you can tie off. And I was like, yeah, but, like, what's going to stop it from, like, yeah, what about the, when the basket goes? Exactly. I'm not worried about the I'm fall. I'm worried about the sudden stop, you know, at the end yeah. of the cable tie off to the basket like so I'm going to be attached to it yeah <laughs> so we ended up getting up in there and we told the crane operator we're like um how high can you take us up he's like well you know the platform you know is like well we'll see what the distance is I was like no like After. on this initial lift like how high can we go in this thing he's like I can get you up to 210 nice I was like let's do it man so we went up there and I got all kinds of cool pictures of the whole Walt Disney World property and everything it was you have like to send me these, these are it, cool. it was really cool they're probably not the best photos because it was on like an iPhone 4 at the time uh, but I'm sure you could spice them up or whatever yeah, yeah. but it was it was pretty cool just cool. just being up there I like I like that type of work I like that environment um, everything you work with is heavy so mm-hmm. you've got the power of hydraulics and a sleever bar man you give with a sleever bar you can move the world like it's like Archimedes said, you give me a, a, a lever long enough and a fulcrum, and I can move the world. And mm-hmm. that's what iron workers use on a daily basis is that sleever bar. That's the one tool from my iron working days I've not given to a student. I've given away pig ears, bull baskets, spud wrenches, bull pins, everything, barrel pins. I've not explain given away my sleever, sleever bar. What is it? So explain like the sleever bar. Is this just like a big crowbar kind of deal? Essentially, it's a crowbar. So I've, it's, uh, I think mine's 24 inches. Okay. It's a hex bar. Okay. Uh, it's tapered at one end to a point, and then on the other end, it's There's just got like a like a wedge, just like yeah, kind of like one a crowbar. Those. I have one of those from um, Klein Tools. Yeah, I have a Klein one. Exactly. So Klein's are really good. Proto's really good. Don't trust anything other than like those two. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then you take a uh, you take so it's like a seven eighths uh, hex stock. You take a three quarter inch uh, lock washer, and then you just drive it down that bar. So now you've got like a little slip ring. So you can put it in a holster and it doesn't slide through. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's Sle- like my favorite tool. Sleever, I use that all the time. Bar. What do I, I don't know. I call it a, um, well, I call it Richard Pry Bar. Richard Pry Bar. There you like go. Richard Pryor. Yeah. yeah. Richard Pry Bar. Yeah. I've got uh, my welding Sir, instructor back Sir at the Richard, school. Yeah. He names all his tools like that. Yeah. Richard Pry Bar. That's what I call it. I like that. I'm going to I can't remember. One. I can't remember who told me that one, but I stole it from somebody this guy, I think I was J, this guy Jay Baker, so this mechanic I used to know, um, and he's like, "Yeah, you want to hand me Richard?" And I'm like, "Richard?" And he's like, "Yeah, Richard Prybar." Like, <laughs> yeah, that's an old joke. Richard Pryor is a comedian for all of the young folks. Dude, that guy was hilarious. Oh, you, yeah. you ever seen his movie Moving? Um, that's a freaking one of his best films. Go watch the movie Moving. moving. Yeah. All right, it's hilarious. It's your homework for fab te- or for for quarantine or yeah. whatever you're doing at home. Yeah, watch Moving. Yeah, Richard Pryor, great film. So what uh what what other things do you have lined up here this week at Fab Tech? Um, so we got um obviously I'm gonna be here taking a bunch of pictures. I think that um like that's like the least that I can do like while I'm here. There's like a lot of people here in the industry that like I'm friends with. And, um, you know, I like taking pictures. I brought my new camera. And um, so I'm going to be just, like, trying to shoot as many people as I possibly can. Wait, you might want to rephrase that. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was, I was, like, in the cab. And I'm like, man, I'm like, I'd really like to come downtown and shoot. And I was like, cameras, you know, just so that everybody yeah, knows. Yeah, just so, like, yeah, everybody in the cab, we're all on the same page. I have, yeah. I'm a photographer. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of what I, I really plan on doing. I mean, it's just. This event is a little bit different. I mean, we have the podcast. Um, I have like I'm part of a, a panel later on this week. Um, 
But other than that, like, I really am just here to support a lot of my friends. I mean, like, you got a few podcasts and stuff. I'd love to get some photos of you that you can use for, for your stuff. Um, Jace, uh, not Jason, um, Justin has the Arc Tank, yeah, which is super cool. He's got three different machines in there that people can weld with. Um, it's all lit up really cool. And, yeah, I mean, uh, Rush has got his reveal of his new welder that's coming out tomorrow. That thing looks badass. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is it, the, the RKX 210 or 220? 220, yeah, RKX 220 yeah. from OTC. That's freaking cool. It's like an, a Rush Kane branded piece of welding equipment you can have in your garage that's pretty, or in your shop. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And I want to. I don't know what, what I'm allowed to say and what I what I can and can't say about this machine, so I'm going to wait until Rush is on tomorrow and talk to him about some of the the different features, but we, we talked about it offline for a little bit, and a lot of the things I wanted to recommend to Lincoln, they've put into this machine. So mm-hmm. I'm interested to try it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, me too. I have not welded. I've welded with the previous version of this thing um, a few years ago at Fabtech, or a couple. I guess it was a couple years ago at Fabtech. Um, and then he got involved with OTC, just kind of working on the R&D side, trying to help promote and develop this machine. And, you know, when you have somebody that has that, like, you know, a super high skill set and has a high demand for like this arc stability, the arc start, and like knows specifically what they that that they need to ask for. Because mm-hmm. like a lot of welders, you know, they don't know what all the knobs and switches do. do. Rush knows what all the knobs and switches does, yeah. and he knows which ones he needs to turn. And when he turns one all the way one way, and he can't get any further, and he's like, I really need this. Need a little bit more on this side. Yeah, that's what's really cool about what OTC has done with this machine and him is they've they've modified basically the computer board in it to give him the results that he's looking for, um, and he'll definitely be able to explain a lot a lot deeper into you know the things that he he suggested to them and the things that he wanted. But um, yeah, that's kind of the. That's the name of the game. I mean, that's kind of what I do with Lincoln. Um, I'm sure that's the same thing that Nick does with um, with Miller, mm-hmm. uh, with their products and stuff. And it's it's really cool to see the industry listening to the end user. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's awesome. I mean, and, and the cool part about it is, it's not just his suggestions. It's people that follow him and people that he knows and talks to. He's translating what what the industry is asking yeah. for to the engineers and stuff because. You know, we don't necessarily have, like, a direct line to these people. Exactly. You can't call up the guy that's building the, com- you know, the computer board and be like, hey, man, I need, like, uh, a lower arc start. You know, like, you just don't. Like, who are you going to talk Who are you gonna yeah. talk to? You call customer service. And they're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. okay, yeah, we'll, we'll put that in the notes. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, no, appreciate it. But when you have... Uh, when you have, like, somebody like Rush that's, that's well-known in the industry that can, you know, speak that language to the engineers and be able to kind of move that needle, it's... I mean, that's where you get really cool new products like a custom branded machine. Yeah, I want to go back and talk about the uh, the Arc Tank over there with uh, with Justin and yeah. Weld Metals Online. Have you tried out any of the machines that are in his booth yet? Um, so I have run um, the CKMT two hundred. I personally have one. I know Rush has one. Um, it's a great machine. Have you run one of the MT two hundred? Yet. Oh, you need to run you it. Never dude. ran one. It's so, so good. I want to go and test it out. It's because like the moped of TIG welders, dude. Like <laughs> it's like even even the best of the best all have this machine. It runs great, and they're not super expensive. Okay. Um, it's a great two hundred amp machine. One of the things that I really like about it, I'm not really great with aluminum, and I forget like sometimes like oh which. which do I turn the balance up or down? You know what I mean? I just I don't do it often enough to, to remember. should probably take some notes. But the the thing that's cool about that is it has all these knobs on the front. and has, like, your, like, default, these are going to work settings, mm-hmm. which is great for, like, 99% of any welding that you're doing. Right. So it simplifies a lot of those AC balance things, and it explains all of them. It's just really easy. Just super simple knobs. Turn some knobs thing works great. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. This segment of the Arc Junkies podcast is brought to you by AHP Welders. AHP makes great machines for a fraction of the cost. If you're new to welding, learning in your garage, or you just need a welder to fix some stuff around the house or small projects, check out AHP.com and get a machine for under a grand without sacrificing performance. That's AHP.com. We're also brought to you by Stronghand Tools, makers of heavy-duty welding tables, toggle clamps, magnets, and fabrication tools. If you're a student and you want to register your school for a free gift package, head on over to stronghandtools.com backslash arcjunkies to register. And be sure to visit Stronghand if you're going to SEMA at booth number 37157, November 2nd through the 5th. Now let's get back into the show. So we, um, 
my buddy Ryan, I don't think you've met Ryan Eubank. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, so he explains it, and this is how I teach my students when we're talking about balance. Think of a submarine, mm-hmm. right? Submarine, uh, think of a submarine in Antarctica. So okay. it has to go under the ice. So the ice is our aluminum oxide. Okay. Right, so when we go down, we're going DC negative because you know, we're going minus. That's all of our penetration. Okay. And then that DC positive cycle is when that submarine has to bust through that layer of ice or aluminum oxide up into the positive cycle. Okay. So that's, you know, if you need more penetration into the material, you're going to give it a little bit more DC negative. Okay. If you need more cleaning action because the material's dirty, such as cast or anything like that, you're going to go a little bit higher towards the positive. But if you don't know, if you leave it at 50-50 balance, you know, you, you can usually squeak by with that. Right, right. Just depending, you know, if you got thicker materials or anything like that, or, you know, if, if you know the material's really clean, but it's also thick, give it a little bit more DC negative. Okay. Get a little bit more cleaning action, that's going to be on the positive side of the cycle. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, too, to see, like, because my perspective of welding aluminum, like, typically when I get into it, I'm working, typically I'm, like, solving some aerospace aluminum welding issue mm-hmm. for one of our central customers. And the, the welder that's welding is far more skilled than I am. I mean, this person welds aerospace stuff for, you know, Boeing or whoever, and maybe they're having issues. So now my job is really to solve, like, the porosity things, or they're having issues with their machine. Nine times out of ten, it's either a bad ground, low gas flow, um, you know, their material has been sitting out or something like that. So it's funny, even though I don't necessarily know all the, like, welding ins and outs of how to set the machine, but I can dial back the porosity. We can get the penetration that we need. We can, you know, solve these other problems. But, you, you know, it, it just depends on what you're doing and wh- where you're welding. Mm-hmm. You know, when you know, when you're in a school or you're out in the field and you're doing like a repair, like you said, like you really need to have more adjustment on these machines. But, you know, for clean aluminum, it, you just kind of set it and yeah. send it. Yeah. The, um, no, I, I definitely want to get in there and check out some of those uh, machines because that's what I'm going to be welding with on Thursday. Okay. So Max Oh, Cerrone, yeah, that's right. You have, the, yeah, you have your competition. With, with okay. the, uh, he runs the CWB podcast, which is like my Canadian counterpart, right? He's like me north of the border, and I'm like him south of the border. So oh, yeah. he's got a Canadian welding podcast. I've got an American welding podcast. So we're going to battle it out head to head. What do you have to weld? We've got to weld uh, a diamond. So Justin has these little gem diamond things. You know, it's all eighth inch stainless steel. Uh, and we're going to be weld. It's all outside corner joints. We're going to weld it up with, uh, with stainless uh, filler wire. Uh, and I don't know how good Max is, so I'm not sure if I should be worried or not, but he's like, we were talking last night at the... Uh, I heard him talking a little trash. That at the Hard Rock? Funny. Well, we were saying, like, uh, apparently he trained a guy to go to Russia for to compete in skills, and I was like, damn, he's... This guy's going to be good. He's, he's going to be good. And then, uh, then, the, then the next thought was, wait, where did this guy place? Like, yeah. did, he, did he win or did he lose? And he's right. like, well, was, you know, we're not going to talk about that. And I was like, okay, so I felt a little bit better. Right. But Saturday before, like, I get on the flight... I went to uh, my distributor, Robert's Oxygen, there in Orlando, and I bought a pack of uh, 116th, 2% thoriated uh, CK take, or tungsten, and then I bought a pack of 332, 2% CK. Oh, nice. And so I'm in my garage cutting them all in half and then, like, sharpening everything down. So I brought all my pre-sharpened tungsten with me because I'm a certified tungsten dipper. Yeah. You know, so the amount of tungsten that I'm probably going to be dipping into this project, I want to make sure I got a fresh point, you know, every time I dip. I mean, really, that's a, like... That's um, when I welded that big stainless cube out um, for the, what's it called? The made with metals videos yeah. that, you, that you saw. So we welded that stainless cube and it's eight to eighth, but it's, um, it was outside corner, but they, what, what they did was they machined a 16th of an inch lip in there. So mm-hmm. it was like a 16th by 16th like land. And we were um, building it out so it could be like a knife edge. Right. So I had to like kind of over weld it and then we had to sand, then blend it, yeah, back blend down. it back out. Yeah. Um, and I used a 330 second tungsten on that. One of the things that I did that you can, that I would suggest that you do is add pulse. Um, oh, I'm the, definitely going to be pulsing. Yeah, turn that pulser on to cut down on the heat input. I like I like seven pulses a second. Now, like I practiced just I have probably maybe two hours of practice before I left. I haven't done TIG welding in six months. I've been like managing welding programs now, mm-hmm. so I haven't been behind the hood since I bought that G502 and took it up to Ohio. With Did you me. bring it with you? I brought it with me. I didn't nice. bring it with me today. It's back at the hotel, but I'm, I'm bringing that with me for the competition. Let me know if you need batteries. I brought extra batteries. Okay, that's the one thing. I brought new lenses and all that stuff. I didn't bring any extra batteries, but like I said, I don't have a whole lot of weld time on it. So right. my nighttime or my daytime welding instructor right now, Juan Ayala, he's like sick when it comes to TIG welding, like aluminum, steel, stainless, whatever. 
he worked at Mitsubishi doing Inconel, like really high end exotic alloys and stuff for like 16 years. So this guy's got like dialed in and we're going back and forth between like what pulse setting I need. And he's, he's a big fan of like one to one and a half. Mm -hmm. I think I was getting better results just me because my travel speed at about seven pulses a second. So we'll see. I want to, I want to sneak over there uh, to the weld metals online booth and and do a couple of uh, practice welds before Thursday comes. Yeah, I would. Um, I don't know which machine. Do you guys have a? You can I think weld, we can use any you can machine, use whatever machine yeah. you want. He's okay. got three of them in there. I'm not. I haven't. Even, I seen him. I popped in there yesterday, but everything was locked down. I think he has a Fronius. Does it? Is it a Prime Weld? Is the middle? I'm not even might sure. Be? I don't know. I everything was locked up. So like the cage where he's got I took all a of his picture stuff. of him. Oh, there you go. Pull him, the picture. Can, yeah, let's pull the picture up and we'll look at it. But um, yeah, I, I stopped by yesterday and but nobody was in there because like to see Fabtech before it opens up, it's kind of insane. Like, I left here probably around 5 o'clock. Okay, yeah, there's a Fronius in there. Yeah, Fronius. I think that's a prime weld, I, I think. Okay. And then the, the CKMT200 is on the end. Okay. Um, I mean, if it were me, I would run the Fronius. Okay. Like, I love the MT200. Great machine. Um, but the Fronius, man, like, that's going to give you, I think that's going to give you the most stable arc. I'll check all three of them out. Yeah. But that, that yeah. Not that I, I don't know a lot about that, uh, that middle machine, but... I would say the Fronius is probably the best one in there. They make okay. some nice stuff. Oh, yeah. the um, But, no, like Fabtech yesterday, you were here. Yeah, I was here. This place was like a freaking wreck, dude. It oh, yeah. It looked like a zombie apocalypse. It's empty. There's, like, rolls of carpet laying everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's tape, trash all over the place. Oh, yeah. And this is, like, 5 o'clock when I left, and I'm like, man, I wonder if they're going to get this place done and set up before doors open at 10 a.m. on Monday. Oh, yeah. And I walk in this morning, and it's like, Everything is pristine. The yes. products Swept are well placed, in. cleaned, brand new carpet, and the AWS carpet. You know, it's it's nice. It's very plush. I think they've got like four layers of padding up underneath here. That's how you can tell you got a good booth is the carpeting. Yeah, when you walk off the show floor, like right into that area, and you're like, oh, this is comfy. Padded flooring. Yeah. yeah. All, although I will say, from like, if you worked in a booth with padded flooring for a while, no, I bet like it kills sta- your feet. It's like standing in the sand. You know, you're like, oh my god. Because you got, like, no support, Yeah, you know? It's I like, got flat feet anyway, so I've got no support. I got Fred Flintstone feet, man. Right, yeah, me too. But you got Chucks on? Yeah, I got the uh, Chuck T's. I finally found nice. them in fat feet. I mean, wide. Wide? Yeah, I can't find them in stores. They're all, like, really narrow. Chuck T's are, like, usually a narrow. Yeah. So I finally found them online in a wide, and I was like, hell yeah. Yeah, there's a new pair of Chuck T's I'm after. Like, I got the PF Flyers on today. Oh, shit, son. Going Sandlot. Yep. These are the Sandlot Edition as well. Are they really? Yeah, I can't find them anymore. That's freaking badass. Sandlot, Sandlot Edition. I've had these for a long time. I usually wear these at the show. Like, anytime I got to walk around a ton, I don't know what it is about these shoes. They just, like, they're good for, like, being on your feet all they day. They make you uh, run faster and jump higher like they did in the Sandlot? Pretty much, man. Like, I always find myself, like, when I wear these, I'm always, like, hustling around everywhere. Like, crosswalk goes. I'm, like, running across the street. <laughs> oh man so what do you what are you looking forward to most at fabtech i mean it's a smaller show this year but i mean i know a lot of the key players like your lincoln your miller esob i mean a lot of companies pulled out they said they're we're not going to show up because you know they sent out mandates back in january they weren't doing any trade shows for 2021 they're possibly thinking about 2022 but i mean with everything that's going on here today or this week what are you looking forward to the most I mean, really, it's just, you know, meeting, guys, you know, guys like you, getting to see people in person. Um, you know, it's it's really crazy. I mean, we, we follow, I feel like all of us, you know, in this kind of, like, welding community, we all follow each other pretty closely. Mm-hmm. You know, we're always, like, I'm listening to the podcasts. You know, you see these people on, you know, on your podcast. You see them on YouTube or Netflix or wherever, you know, wherever you're seeing them. Um and then get to see them in person and, and hang out with them. I mean, that's really the, the it's, it's the best, it's the best part for me. Yeah. Um, you know, everywhere, like back at home, um, you know, I work a ton. I'm always like, you know, running machines, working, doing stuff. Like I'm just like Nate at home. But when I come here, it's like being a part of like a big family. Yeah. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter what you do in the industry. Like, when you're here, like, we're all together. We're all, like, we all have the same common goal. We can all nerd out about yeah. welding. It's like Carabas. When you're here, you're family. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I thought it was I pretty neat. Like, 
Isn't uh, that Carab? Isn't that uh, it's Olive Garden? That Olive Garden shit. Olive I screwed Garden. that Carabas. up. Well, thank God they're not a sponsor. But no, <laughs> dude, that would be great. No, I thought yeah, it was Olive Garden. Yeah, right. A sponsor. I thought it. I thought it was kind of neat because I was sitting there having a beer with uh, Andrea at the bar last night, the Hot Metal twenty four seven, and we're just chatting, and all of a sudden Nick Bazatis walks up, and like I'd never met Nick in person. I've had him on the podcast. You know, we did an Instagram live oh, a while yeah, back. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm standing. I'm looking at him. And I'm like, I know you, but I don't. I've never met you. And I'm like, oh shit, it's Nick. So, you know, we got to chat. And so, I mean, I think that's one of the coolest things is I finally get to meet a lot of the guests that I've had on the show via Zoom in person. And this is like the one time of the year mm-hmm. where I can see all of these people in one area. Yeah. And I, I just thought it was kind of neat. You know, I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people that, you know, like I think Bill Comlos is going to be here. Mm-hmm. I had a three-hour conversation with him on the podcast. And we probably talked for another two hours after the fact, but I've never met the man in person. That's awesome. And he's, like, super smart. So I want to meet him in person. Uh, we just met Gary Konarska. I mean, I thought yeah. that was super rad. Yep. Uh, but just going around, seeing everybody, you know, and, and I know that there's a bunch of new products that are out right now. So I'm like, you know, what other products do we have? There's Sean. Debs Wellington. Debs Wellington. Hanging, hanging out. out. What's going on, bud? Um, but, yeah, and, and Sean. Like, I, I yeah. mean, I met Sean two years ago for the first time at FabTech. I mean, had I not gone to FabTech, I would have never met Sean in person. Uh, so this year we get to connect again. We get to hang out. He's going to be on the show Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just think it's, like, super cool to, to be able to meet these people in person, you know. And people are, like, larger than life here. Yeah. It, which, is, which is really cool. I mean, to see people um, that, you know, like, you know, Rush and I are friends. Like, he was, like, at my house, like, you know, for my birthday last year. Right. But I still get starstruck when I see him. I'm like, oh, man, it's Rush it's Kane. It's Rush Kane. Can I get your autograph? Yeah. Will you sign my G502? You're so sick, dude. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, I just, I'm glad that, like, people here kind of meet my level of, like, being stoked about welding. Yeah. Like, for sure. It's a passion. There's a passion. Everybody's everybody's stoked about, you know, what they do. They're glad to be here, you know. Um, Getting to see, that's the other thing that's really cool. Getting to see, like, guys like you where people just keep coming up to you, like, constantly. Like, oh, man, like, I listen to your show. I listen to your podcast. It's like, it's really, like... I don't know, man. It makes you feel really good. It's like really cool to see the impact. Like yeah. The guy that just walked up a little bit ago, he's like, oh, man, I love your videos. You know, I show them all the time in my class, the grinder safety video, the oxyacetylene video. Like, thanks for putting that together. I think that part's really cool that, you know, like, I made a video, uh, you know, with Weld.com. Like, I didn't make the video. We put the video together, you know, for, you know, the welding community. But I think it's really cool that, you know, the reach that it has, how many people are not only consuming it themselves, but they're recommending it to others, mm-hmm. you know, just to see the, the actual reach that you, you have behind, you know, social media and what social media can actually do for you as a brand and as a person and, in, you know, an entire industry. Yeah. Like welding is cool now. Like when I was growing up, welding wasn't cool. You yeah, know, I was same. told, you know, don't, don't get into welding because, you know, it's, it's a dying trade, you know, and it's like, you're never going to make any money doing welding. And it's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, look where I'm at now. Yeah. Like sitting I've got in, a sitting pretty, in the AWS booth yeah. at Fabtech. I've got, doing, I've got a, a pretty decent living right now, and yeah. uh, I'm having a good time doing it. And people used to tell me that, uh, like, they were like, "Man, it's so dumb that you take photos of your welds. Like, why are you taking pictures of your welds?" <laughs> I'm like, "Well, first of all, they look really good, and second of all, I'm like, because I think it's cool. Yeah. You know, one so, day it'll catch on. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, someday this will be cool. Yeah, exactly. And now it's like, now all of a sudden, there's a whole platform built around it. Yeah." Yeah, well, that's what, yeah, when, when Instagram, like, became a thing, I was like, oh, now I know where I can put all these stupid welding photos. And then people <laughs> were like, these are great. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool. All right. I, I thought they might be. But, yeah, like, it's just cool. Like, being here, like, around a bunch of people that love welding is, you know, that's really what it's all about for me. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to the whole thing. I mean, like, I want to check out some of the vendors and stuff. I mean, people have new products that are coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I wonder what's new new products-wise. Like, that's something I don't – I mean, we don't even know. Like, yeah. I don't know yet. I, I want to go check out – I want to hit up the uh, the Hypertherm booth because Ray oh, built that right. massive set of wings right, right. Um, that are featured over there. So I get to sneak in there and check them out. But I want to get a photo with the wings that Ray built. They're launching a new product also. That's what I heard, but I don't know. I'm don't thinking know it's a, like a self-contained all-in-one, but I, I really? don't know. That's what I want. I'm like, please be a PowerMax 45 Air. Yeah. Please. Generate its own air. That way you don't have to have an air compressor and all that stuff at the house. Like, yeah. 110, 220, like PowerMax 45 Air would be, yeah. No, it'd be pretty slick. You, did you see Everlast just came out with the Storm, the 215IC? No. It's a MIG, stick, and plasma cutter all in one. Interesting. And without the stats in front of me, I want to say it's like 200 amps of MIG 
or 200, yeah, 200 amps MIG, like 180 on stick, and then 60 amps for plasma cutting. Wow. It's supposed to be pretty slick. Interesting. But I mean, that's yeah, like that's for a home hobbyist or something like that, that'd be yeah, like, like the one. ideal machine. Right. Like, right. I don't want to, like, because I want a plasma cutter at the house, but I don't want to go and buy an air compressor for it, you know? I have a 30 air, the Hypertherm PowerMax 30 air. Mm -hmm. That's what I use. I mean, it cuts up to like three eighths, I think. That's I mean, pretty decent. And it runs on 110 and 220. Okay. So it's, I mean, it's just like, and you know, it's got the little twist lock connector on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, hypertherm stuff is without a doubt expensive. Their consumables are expensive. The torches are expensive. The, I mean, everything about them is expensive. But um, at Central, like, I won't even sell any other plasmas, with the exception of the now recently, um, since we've had some supply stuff, like mm -hmm. dealing with hypertherm. I mean, obviously, everybody's everybody's with that. tied up right now. But Lincoln's plasmas. Um, I would, I would, you know, I would run one of those. Yeah, we got um, the Tomahawk 1000 at the school. Yeah. And then I got a couple of the Tomahawk 625s. How those been running? They run great. I mean, in the, in the hands, uh, in the right hands. I mean, we burn up a lot of consumables when we teach it. But, you know, the students don't understand that is, that's not a drag nozzle, sir. <laughs> you're going to have to, <laughs> we need a little bit of distance between the, uh, the nozzle and the material you're cutting. Either that or you got to put the training wheels back on. Right, right. I, I know you're embarrassed to put the little drag shield on there, but until you can figure out how to adjust your hand properly and not drag the nozzle on the material, yeah. we're going to have to use the drag shield. Yeah, that's a good point. Not a drag nozzle. Yeah. They make drag nozzles. I just oh, yeah. don't have them. Right, you right. Know, they're they're yeah. a bit more pricey, you know. Yeah, look at what trying you're trying to ball on a budget over here. Yeah, look what consumables you're using for sure. And they're they get they get expensive quick. Yeah, I've heard that the hypertherm is going to go to uh, that f the ca full cartridge, full front cartridge style, like um, so nozzle, swirl, ring, and electrode. Are we allowed to talk about that? I no, we can. I think this. I think yeah, so. we'll, we'll be good. They're unveiling it today, so this, it's not going to air today. We'll be good. Yeah. yeah, but it's like all in one. You got the nozzle, the cup, the swirl ring. Everything is like one solid. So you just swap out one consumable. Yeah, a lot of people are going to complain about that, I'm sure, because it's like 60 bucks or something like that. But it's like, but dude. you're replacing like five consumables in one. Yeah, and it's it's best to kind of change all that out, anyways. You just get better. It is. Cut. You bet get better results. I'm, I'm cheap though. Like I'm like, oh, let me just swap the nozzle out this time, and I'll swap out the electrode on the next run. And, like, on a CNC plasma cutter, I pay for it later because it's like, shit, you know, like, I should have just swapped everything out like yeah. I'm supposed to and, and, you know, not trying to, to stretch my pennies out. Well, the reason, one of the reasons why they're doing it is because a lot of, they have knockoff consumables that mm -hmm. they're dealing with. And they are doing it so to prevent the knockoff consumables going on their, their equipment. I mean, can you imagine having, like, a, like I love, you love the Porsche example. Imagine having a Porsche and then just buying, like, cheap tires for it yeah and then you're like out ripping your porsche around you're like this thing's like all over the place yeah, it runs like shit yeah and it's like no dude like you have cheap tires on it. it's like you can't just put cheap tires on on something that's high horsepower yeah like it's the you know the the consumables are the like literally like what drives the you know what delivers the arc to the product and you can have this super nice high-end plasma cutter with cheap consumables and it's going to cut like garbage. Yeah. It's got to cut out a lot of the troubleshooting too and be like, are you using what, you know, what parts are you, no, I'm using the right stuff. It's like, I was talking to Kane uh, yesterday just, and, you know, talking about gas lenses, the way that the screens are actually clocked on the inside. So if you've oh, got yeah. like, and I, this has never even occurred to me, you know, like if your screens are matted up to where one screen's blocking the other with airflow. Oh yeah. You may just have to rotate that, you know, one of the screens left or right just a little bit and that might solve your problem. And my point. head was like, Phew. like, I never even that's thought a, of that. That's a good point. Like, you get a brand new gas lens out of the box, and you weld, and you're like, man, that weld's like shit. Like, that, you know, for what I paid for it, it should run great. Right. Turn it a little bit. Right. And then try it. That's a good point. I never even thought about that. And that's like the cheap ones that they sell on Amazon. I get students all the time. You know, they buy the ones on Amazon with the gas lenses and the Pyrex, you know, cups and all that. Right. And it's like, don't buy them. They don't fit together, and they weld like crap because they leave the um, – whenever they punch the screens out, mm -hmm. they leave the oils on those screens. They don't clean them before they insert it into the gas lens. When you get – you know, when you start welding with it, your welds just look shitty. Oh, You know, just horrible. because you've got the film on the, you know, the screens yeah. from the manufacturing process. Because it's perf. Yeah, and yeah, people are like, oh, just soak in acetone. Like, for what you're paying for it, you shouldn't have to, like, pre-soak all your parts before you – you know, your consumables before you use them. Yeah, that's – yeah, Today's message is brought to you by high-end consumables. Yeah, high-end consumables. <laughs> like, buy, you know, buy once, cry once. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. We've talked about that several times on the podcast before. Is like, buy what you can afford now, 
make some money and then buy the stuff that's going to make your life easier. The goal is always to be buying the top of the line stuff. Like it, I, we talked about this, I think a little bit about when I went to Lincoln and, and, you know, the power wave platform is like kind of like, you know, the, the machine that I'm like most obsessed with. And, you know, I kept asking him like, what is it? What are you doing? What are you putting in the, where's the secret sauce that yeah. you're putting in this machine? And they were like, no, no, no. It's every single part is top of the line like from beginning to end we don't just put the small cable in we don't just put the cheapest board in we get the best board that we can get we get the best cables that we can get we don't cut any corners beginning to end and then you get that much better of a product um you I mean and that's the same thing with you know when you're when you're welding something when you're fabricating something like yeah you can get by i mean there's lots of guys that um there's this guy kevin sibbins i welder up i don't know if you follow that guy He'd be pretty funny to have mm -hmm. on the podcast, but he welds like pipe. He does like Nick, but he not, does like Nick Bazzata stuff, but with like not the nicest equipment. Okay. Like he does that level of work, but like the stuff that he has is like not fancy. He yeah. has like pretty much no fancy equipment at all. Okay. But he does the same caliber work and makes fun of guys like me and Nick that have all new stuff. Yeah. Right. Which is, which is awesome. No, but I like, it's like Pokemon. Like, I want to collect them all, man. I yeah. love freaking tools. Yeah, same. And, like, when I ran my business, I ran my business for two years with, like, you know, the small rigid toolboxes. They're, like, maybe 150 bucks at Home Depot. Yeah. That's all I had for my toolbox. Mm -hmm. And it was just, like, clamps galore in there, you know, vice grips and all that stuff. It wasn't anything fancy. It wasn't anything top of the line. It was just C-clamps, chunks of angle iron, and flat bar, you know, to hold and, and position things. I didn't have... Ratchet straps, you know, you can you can do a lot of work with ratchet straps. You yeah. know, just getting things into position, you know, long enough to tack it, get that tack to hold, then you can weld it out. But yeah, I mean, you can you can do it, but then like the goal is to make my life easier. Like I don't want to fight my work all day. Yeah, you know, so any any tool or component or accessory that I can get to make my life a little bit easier and suck less, uh, I'm gonna do it. Especially like working in the heat in Florida. Like I want to be in the heat for the least amount of time as possible because. Now I'm playing with electrical arc at about 10,000 degrees, and it's 100 degrees outside as it is. You know, 80, now I got my PPE 80, 80 on. 80% humidity. Yeah, yeah, 120% humidity today. It's like, <laughs> fuck. It's, <laughs> it's hot. Yeah, and, like, it's you can achieve 120% humidity because it's now it's raining. So <laughs> it's yeah. raining and it's hot. Yeah, Florida's um, – I went to tech school at, in Pensacola. Right. Um, at the NAS Pensacola, and that was – yeah, it just was like – I remember walking from, like, the barracks to the mega building – and I'd be, like, soaked through my BDUs by the time I got yeah. to the building. This, Florida's on the same um, latitudinal line as uh, Vietnam. Oh, my God. So, I mean, when you it's think about it. Yeah, it's like when I go hunting out in the woods and everything. I'm sitting in there palmetto weeds or palmetto bushes and pine trees and stuff like that. It's very similar to, like, I've never been to Vietnam, but it's, like, that same level. Like, the swamps in Florida, you know, the same heat and humidity as Vietnam. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty nasty at times. But... Yeah, you want to weld as short as mu a short amount of time. Yeah. Like as much as I like welding, like when I was at when I was at Lincoln, they had like storms first thing in the morning, and it was like super super hot. It was like ninety degrees or something. They were like in the middle of a heat wave, and they were unveiling the or they were showing me the that Frontier machine, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh, do you want to weld with it?" And I had like I I had been like walking around like did a full plant tour. I mean like in the plant is like a half a mile. It's a million long. square foot. Yeah, it's like a quarter mile wide and yeah. then like a half a mile long and it's a multiple stories massive so i'm in there and i'm like walking around and stuff and they're like oh do you want to weld to this machine i'm like i'm okay yeah it's, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll sit back here and watch i'm okay uh not welding it because like where they had it was like it was out back and they have this big like it's like big cement area where yeah. they keep all the the like uh engine drives and stuff and then the sun was just like cooking in that back corner and like do you want to weld it i'm like i'm good i'm like i have to go to a dinner after this i'm like i'm already soaked through this shirt yeah. so that's where they do a lot of their r and d stuff back there we did uh, i brought my students up there carl peters who used to run lincoln education just a super cool dude very smart he was the one that helped lincoln get into um, drag racing nhra uh, you know the auto or the auto shows sema monster trucks like everything aeroshell the acrobatic team all that stuff but mm -hmm. He, I worked with him, and he got my group of students to go up there. But that back area where you're talking about, that's where we went up there in December, so it's like freezing-ass cold. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that's where they did the orbital TIG demonstration. So that yes. was kind of cool to be able to watch that, see how he dialed it in, put the route in, do a fill pass and a cap. But it was much better weather. With the Apex system. Yeah. 
Yeah, the Apex system is really cool. Um, I don't know if I can tell anybody, but yeah, the Apex system is going to be um, used a lot more. Let's just say that. Okay. Um, Fair that's going to become probably a much more like prevalent thing. I mean, anytime any automation is, we're headed in that direction. Yeah. Um, if you can jump on the automation bandwagon, and you could be like, let's say you're a pipe welder, you have a rig truck, you know, or whatever, and you could run an Apex system rather than being in the ditch welding. Mm-hmm. Like you could be sitting there in a lawn, tra- lawn chair, like drinking a iced tea, holding your Apex system pendant, welding out a pipe. I mean, that technology exists today. Right. You just would have to invest in it. And, and it, it won't be long before now it's on your smartphone. That's true. That's true. So it'll be a short jump. I, I heard about... Um, Miller's coming out, speaking with, uh, of smartphone, um, they're coming out with some uh, augmented reality welding with a smartphone. Really? Yeah. I heard about this. Um, they Basically, it's like, a, it's like an Android, like I think it's for Android or something like that, but basically they use like augmented reality and you have like a MIG welding gun and you can like weld an augmented reality, like, but with a smartphone app. And I think it's like three grand or something for the... For the, the like, software. for the software or whatever, but that's okay. kind of cool. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about like the Vertex system because I went to Lincoln, did some Vertex training as well while I was there, and you know, a lot of people are kind of afraid of this augmented reality, fake welding kind of thing. But the whole, like, I think I might have said this in the last podcast, but like the the good thing about any of this stuff is, and especially now, like, with you have like remote a lot of remote learning going on. Like, how mm-hmm. do you teach welding at home? It's like being able to be around welding minus the arc gives you leaves you just the variables. Yeah, that's it. You have like all you all you're able to be left with is just your you know your hand inputs. You know contact tip, gun angle, or contact tip to work distance, gun angle, travel, travel speed, speed, all yeah. that stuff. And it really, you know, with if you haven't welded before, being able to just see those things and understand how important those are to like making a weld the way that you want them. Um, I think it's helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you're just starting out. Yeah. It's not my favorite way to learn how to weld, but but like, so for instance, um, you know, Dr. Scott Helzer, I don't know if you've met him yet. I have not. He's super cool dude. I've had him on the podcast. We talked about the WPSs and, um, PQRs and all that. Mm -hmm. Super smart guy. He's the one that helped me train originally for my CWI, just Mm -hmm. a super intelligent dude. But he does a lot of consulting work for big name companies. There was a company that, you know, they're like, hey, we got to get our welders trained and certified and stick 3G by Friday. Oh, man. So, you know, he's, and this is like the week before. So they're like, we're going to fly you up here. Tell us what you need. We'll have it here when you get here. He says, I need five Vertex systems. This is back in like 2015, maybe 2016. So he started them on Vertex. He started them on, and these are professional. These are professional welders, right? Mm-hmm. They just need to get certified, and, and the company not, doesn't have time to train them and recertify them, stuff like that. They worked for, I think, the first two days on the Vertex systems, mm-hmm. and then he put them on, you know, like real welding, uh, day three and four, and then by Friday, everybody was testing, and they all passed. That's but awesome. But that's his method of training is, like, I'm going to show you to do it on the Vertex because we're going to isolate the variables. Um, you know, I can actually see what you're looking at under the hood. I can tell you what you're supposed to be seeing under the hood. We can demo it out and have a normal conversation. You don't have, like, sparks flying. You don't have to worry about the PPE. You don't have to worry about getting burnt. Like, everything's isolated to fundamentals and technique. Mm-hmm. And all your variables are tied into a WPS, and you can lock that system out. So I think that that's the other – you brought up the WPS thing. I mean, so few people um, weld to, to, to procedures. Yeah. Um, but the WPS is, like – I mean, it, it's not a big secret – but it's also, it's like the secret. Yeah. Like, you know, you could call me or send me a message. I have people all the time, you know, and I say this, I think every single podcast, anybody that wants to know where to set their machine, especially MIG welding, you know, send me what wire, gas, wire diameter you're running, and I can tell you, and what, you know, material thickness you're mm-hmm. welding on, and I can tell you exactly where to set your machine. Because there's... That's the whole point of the procedures. Yeah. That's the whole point of an inspection. There's a recipe for it. You there's, don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, no. And there's only a handful of ways to weld things. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's only a handful of, like, perfect optimum ways to weld things. Um, you know, it's just, like, a lot of people get creative, and they're like, I like, you know, 375. And it's like, that's fine. If you like 375 or you like 328 or whatever it is, that's cool. But, you know, the reality is, like, you know, 
400 or whatever may be like the most optimum right. number. Um, but everybody's going to have their own preference. Everybody's, but and that's that's also going to change, like depending on your travel speed. Because some people walk a little bit faster, some people a little bit slower. So if you run faster, you're going to run run higher settings. If you run a little bit slower, like I weld a little bit slower, so I run lower settings. But the heat inputs can be the same because now I'm I'm decreasing my travel speed. Yes. So I'm getting the same amount of joules put into that part. Yeah, depending on. Well, it just depends. Depends on how low you go. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah you got to stay within that optimal window. So I mean, like. Even for a 7018 rod, you know, like the X caliber 7018, they recommend anywhere from like 90 to 160 amps. That's yeah. a pretty, I mean, you get, like, you get a 70 amp window to play around with. Yeah, like that's if, a but lot. if you drop below 90, you're no longer within an optimal setting. And if you no. go above 160, you're hitting, you know, the high end of the current carrying capacity of that electrode. Right. And you're just going to smoke it. So, you know, you stay within those, a, those windows. I can't imagine running a 7018 at 160 amps. No. I mean, an, an, eighth, be, inch, an, eighth, an eighth inch. Yeah. Rod. That'd be. Where do you run your eighth inch rods? I run, so in flat position, yeah. I do the decimal equivalent. So 125 amps in flat and horizontal. Okay. Uh, once I get into a vertical, I do decrease it by about 10%. So anywhere from 110 to 112. Okay. And then when I go overhead, I drop about 5%. So that puts me right around 118, 120. Okay. Uh, and it works out great. And people are like, oh, you're welding too, you know, too cold. And it's like, my bend tests are good. Yeah. So weld wherever you want yeah, as long weld, as your tests are good. Yeah, weld within the parameters. Bend tests are good. I'll bend it every single time, and it passes. So I'm not worried. That's what I train my students to. Now, if you're, you know, I've talked about this several times on the podcast before. If you have much longer, you know, lead, you got to compensate because yeah. you've got amp drop. You know, depending on how much cable you're running. Unless out. you have crosslink. <laughs> yeah, well, there, there if you, you have go. crosslink with a stick welding crosslink module, which is basically like a box. So you could actually have like remote, um, remote voltage um, adjustment, adjustment, or not remote voltage, but remote amperage adjustment, and your your amperage and voltage all the way out, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you are. So basically, you 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 put your stick lead, your stinger lead into the um, crosslink stick box, right? And then you can be like a thousand feet away from your like Ranger 330 MPX, any machine with crosslink. And you can have your remote adjustment out there. So you got fine tune adjustment right with, there with no drop. Okay. No drop. So it just kind of compensates. Yeah. So what it's doing is that box has basically like a meter in it. And you set on the box 115 or what, 120 or whatever it might be. It says to the machine, hey, I want 120. And the machine's like, hey, I'm sending you 120, but I'm only getting back like 90. Yeah. I'm going to send you 150. See how that works. Oh, cool. Are you getting you're 130? I'm going to turn it down. But it does this millions of times a second. So it's kind of like a voltage sensing lead. It just regulates itself. Correct. So you're you're getting what That's you set. That's TVT, True Voltage Technology, and Crosslink. Those two things are are the same thing. That's pretty cool. Welding technology, man. Yeah. Like what? can I say? Well, shit. Uh, I think that's a good way to end it. We're 55 minutes into, the, into a 45-minute episode, and uh, nice. I know you got some stuff to do. I got some stuff to do, so we'll go ahead and close it out. Uh, right on. Thanks once again for stopping by. Absolutely. I'm glad to have you here in person. Uh, yeah. We usually do it over uh, via Zoom, but, you know, doing it face-to-face, -face, it's, been, it's been awesome. It's been real fun, man. Thank uh, you. Yeah, man. Cool. All right, everybody, that is it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about anything that comes up on the show, you can always DM me on Instagram at ArcJunkiesPodcast. You can email me directly, show at ArcJunkies.com, and you can check out the all-new Arc Junkies website by clicking the link in the show notes. The new website gives you access to stream all Arc Junkies episodes, contact the show, and pick up Arc Junkies merchandise. Stay safe out there, and until next time, make every world better than your last.